Hello, and welcome back to the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. And today, we I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this show because we have a lot of recent examples of authors who took the advice of social media, friends, relatives, all of which are not in the industry or haven't written a book. Amy, do you want to, do you want to talk a little bit about the origin story of this? Yeah, we actually, we had an author come to us recently that had a really great story, great background, really cool guy. And it was just so bizarre that, I mean, not that it doesn't happen all the time, but his cover was just so wrong for his book. It, it just didn't make any sense. And I'm just thinking like, wow, this guy's really articulate. And he, again, he, his resume was excellent. It's just sometimes it you're a little more shocked than usual when the book cover's not great. And he was really open when I said, you know what? You really need a better cover. You need a cover that speaks to your genre. You need. And when I started talking to him about it, he said, well, you know, I, he sent me another one. He said, do you like this? And I said, oh my gosh, because it was, you know, not long. I'm like, where did he pull this out of? And he shared that he actually was going to go with the better cover that was totally appropriate for his topic and genre. But he gave, he did a poll on social media and asked people to choose and they chose the bad one. Yeah. What I'm going to call the bad one. I think Penny and I both agreed that it was, it was bad. awful. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm all, apparently I'm all about the truth. I, I just like, not that we lie on this pod, but I, it was terrible. It was terrible. And when he said that, and I was just like, oh my gosh, but it didn't, it was kind of one of those light bulb moments because we see a lot of unfortunate covers, sadly, or just covers that are just not right. You know, they're just off for what the author's trying to achieve or the genre that it's in. And so we are like, we should probably do a show on this because I bet that happens a lot you know, where somebody yeah. shares a cover or shares an idea or shares, you know what I mean? With a friend or a relative or something, and they want to be supportive. So they're like, yes, go you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's, that's not the same as getting solid business advice. Well, but I think that it is. So the first thing to remember is that family and friends don't want to hurt your feelings if they don't like something that you've showed mm-hmm. them. Right. So when an author says to me, my mom loved this, loves this book, or my neighbor loves this book, if somebody has to face you on a regular basis, they're more likely to say, we love it. Right. And the same thing, actually, even for your writing group. I mean, unless you're one of the lucky ones and you have this writing group that is just, um, you know, that is just tremendously honest, which is, which is sort of rare. Um, but it, you got to take it with a grain of salt. So, and, and social media is just so guilty of this, right? I mean, first off, social media is a whole separate conversation, but you don't really know who you're reaching. You don't know what their, um, preference, you know, a lot of times we're putting stuff out on social media. We don't really know what their preferences are. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to take a poll, to run a, you know, to do something, but Most of the time as an author, your audience is, your audience is probably going to be mixed anyway. And you may have less than 5% of people that you're connected with on social who actually read your genre. So they're not going to really know, you know what I mean? And, and also, I don't know, like this author, when he came back with this cover was amazing, but I don't know how he worded his originally, his original note on social media, right? He could have said something like, I really love this cover. What do you guys think? And what are you going to say? Right. You know, what's on, what's on Bethany going to say, of course, I love that cover. Right. I mean, totally. And I think people that are closer to you, especially Penny that, and I think this was a good point that you touched on when you said, I don't know how he presented this. I think that has to be taken into consideration as well. If you get to state your case or if somebody close to you already knows the, um, your inspiration or your motivation behind this book, they know your story, they know you've been working on this for 10 years. There's all these other factors that come into play that skew their opinion or their feedback and things like that. Whereas you have to realize that the people buying your books, they're going by first impression only. You know, so when they land on your retail page, all of those things that just hit them all at once, they don't know your backstory. 
you know, they don't know your motivation. They don't know your inspiration. They don't, you know what I mean? All these other things that could potentially affect somebody's opinion. That's not the situation you're in when you're trying to sell a book. Right. Right. Exactly. So you're, you know, one of the things that I always say is that if your editor doesn't make you cry (laughs) at some point, they're probably not doing a good job. You really want to surround yourself with people who are going to give you some really constructive feedback and not all of it is going to be necessarily be good. And I'll tell you something, Amy will be the first person and I'm not encouraging everybody to email Amy, (laughs) Um, but Amy is a really good person. Like she will, like we'll have authors contact us and she looks at the book cover and she really does a deep dive into who they are before I chat with them. Um, But a lot of times, I mean, your feedback and you're so, um, you're so, I find out what the word is that I'm looking for, but you're so good about giving this feedback to these authors that they, you know, some of them take it, most of them actually take it very well. Mm -hmm. Occasionally somebody's like, I like everything I do. You're stupid. Go away. But I know, um, (laughs) I think you really, I think you, I'm sure there are voodoo dolls of me out there somewhere. Right. I'm sure that there are, but I think that you have to. So part of taking this advice with a grain of salt is also be careful who you ask. Cause a lot of times, so I I get authors that I get on the phone with them and like, Oh, my cousin thinks I should be on Oprah. Right. It's like, first off, Oprah didn't have a show anymore. Mm -hmm. But second, um, what, what's your cousin's, what does your cousin do? Is your cousin in PR is is in which case, why is your cousin not promoting this book for you. Do you know what I mean? Like it's people people offer a lot of well-meaning advice. You Mm -hmm. gotta take it with a grain of salt because remember it's your career. And a lot of times what happens is people tell us kind of sort of what we want to hear. Right. Um, and I think in line with that penny too, like you were going down that path of is your cousin a PR person? Because I think we see that a lot with people that are in artistic fields, like maybe they're graphic designer. So someone thinks like, oh, so-and-so can do my cover because they do graphic design. Two very different things, you know, because you're good at oil painting doesn't mean you're good at pottery, you know, like it it is very much the same. And we've had people that, you know, oh, my my such and such is an avid reader and they edited the book. It's like not the same thing, you know? Yeah. Apples and oranges. So I think this extends beyond just superficial feedback, but it also comes to the quality of the work that you put out too. being careful about who you solicit for advice and support in that regard as well. It's very, it is very true. You have to, like, I hear this a lot. My neighbor was a school teacher and she has edited the book and, and, um, again, your neighbor doesn't want to disappoint you and tell you, you, this character has a flaw and this has to be worked out, or you have to remove this chapter because it's extreme. It, the reader doesn't necessarily move the book forward. You really want, and this is part of the reason why you hire people, you bring people on your team who are going to be able to give you solid and sometimes uh, critical feedback that are, that's going to make you successful. Absolutely. And, you don't, you know, you don't, you just don't always get that from, from social media. Um, and for the record, Penny's editor has almost made me cry as well. So it's a very real thing. <laughs> I know. Oh, sometimes when I get my books back and they're bleeding with, you know, and I'm like, oh my, I mean, bleeding of course is an old editor term. I know. Just I know. totally dated myself, but when I have all these, when I hit the, you know, look at all track changes and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have such a headache that I have to close the document and come back to it. Um, but that's the thing that makes you better. Honestly, th- those are the things that make you better. That kind of feedback. Yes. Maybe you need your eighth cover redo or something like that. Those are the things that make you better. Most of us don't hit it out of the park, right out of the gate. I certainly don't. I mean, please don't go onto Amazon and look at my old book covers, but some of my old book covers, I wish somebody had said, I mean, it's kind of like, right. Those times when I probably shouldn't wear like Penny, why did you wear that outfit actually out in public? <laughs> we, <laughs> right. Your friends all be like, Oh, you look great. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, 
wow, I kind of look like I could be a Chinese spy balloon. I'm just saying, right? You really want to surround yourself with people who can give you, um, it's great to get the support from friends and family. Surround yourself with people who can give you some great critical feedback. Yep. Seek out the tough love and the tough advice. It's going to make you better. I agree. Seek out the tough love, you know, and I've had Amy many times. I think this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why we work together so well, she will come back to me and be like, Penny, we need to do less of this. I'm like, I think that's a great idea. And she didn't like all my ideas. Um, certainly I had some wild ideas where she's just like, really, <laughs> do we want to, and that's the kind of thing that you really want to have on your team. So seek it out. Absolutely. Yeah. And for what it's worth, Penny pushes me out of my little, out of my lane where I'm like, no, the rules, we have to follow them. <laughs> We just did a podcast on the rules. Are we saying now that we don't have to follow them? What's no, I'm, I, that is why we did that podcast. Cause I love me some rules, but like. <laughs> Amy loves it. Amy, Amy loves her rules. She loves her. So, you know, we're not discouraging you necessarily, but get, get some, get some critical feedback, get some second opinions, mm-hmm. make sure. And, you know, one of the things on the topic of book covers, I had an author one time actually take two book covers to a bookstore. And t- and say you know on a, on a day when it so not a weekend on a day when it was you know the traffic was a little bit slower, and she could actually talk to some of the staff because they they are the front line for as long as we have bookstores, which hopefully will be a very long time, but they are the front line people, and you know she had two ideas and one of them got completely shot down and it happened to be the one that she really loved and she said okay I'm going to go with I'm going to trust these bookstore people who do not have a horse in this race and she did it and the book did really well. So seek, seek good feedback. I think I've like probably uh, taken this way far down the rabbit hole, but um, I think think it's important. Yeah. I think you got to take, you got to take some of this advice with, with a little bit of a grain of salt. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you're still listening after this episode because sometimes we do episodes and we're like, Oh my gosh, we ranted a little bit too much, but love us, love our rant. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 